and we're back. It's 7.34 on the clock. This is June with you on The Breakfast Show on this Sunday, the 8th of July. And I did say we had a special guest with us in our studios today. And we would like to welcome Mr. Chandrasekhar. Good Hello morning. and welcome. Good morning. Thank you, June, for a great opportunity. Well, it is our pleasure because as we know, you know, people in Muscat are always looking for things to do, ways to pass their time. And uh, you and your company, your uh, the, the whole group have come up with an excellent way to provide more opportunities. Thank you very much. I think we have always been doing that. Uh, we have been in the forefront of entertainment for little more than 40 years and we have been constantly trying to evolve. We have been constantly trying to sort of uh, move in a different direction. I think uh, the latest uh, addition to the Muscat Grand Mall is a step in the right direction. Right, you're absolutely right. Oman Arab Cinema Company, LLC. And uh, for four decades? Yeah, that's right. I think it's a long time. It seems like yesterday. I think uh, it's been a very long journey. And then the long journey has been, you know, uh, it's been wonderful and eventful. And uh, what happened was uh, the journey really sort of, you know, catapulted in a big way after 2000 when we set up the City Cinema Shati. Then we moved on to setting up uh, Sur, that is City Cinema Sur in 2006. Um, then in Sohar, that is the City Cinema Sohar. Then of course right now all of you know that in 2012 we have the Muscat Grand Mall. It's not all. Uh, we have Buremi coming in very shortly and then uh, Salala. So obviously I think uh, quite a bit of uh, activity for the year. Absolutely. Uh, so City Cinema at the Muscat Grand Mall is the latest That's edition. Right. Yeah. What was the thought process uh, behind that step? Um, you see, uh, if you look at our properties earlier, most of them, uh, I would say all of them until the Muscat Grand Mall really came into play, that is our city cinema over there, they were all in standalone properties. Uh, if you look at the world over, uh, the audience now is increasingly preferring to be uh, watching the movies in an area where they could spend a wholesome family entertainment. Yes. Uh, obviously, I think fitting ourselves in the mall was the right step in that direction. Uh, what we did was uh, we were looking at uh, a right uh, location and Muscat Grand Mall fitted our requirements perfectly well. And uh, it has got multifarious shops, it has got dining facilities, it has got uh, gaming and you have uh, entertainment for children and young adults and of course the cinema. And uh, we as an anchor, we have a role cut out and we have a very important task to the ma mall actually and to the public at large. I'm sure we're doing it well. I think we have received excellent response uh, from the members of the public for which we are extremely grateful. Yeah, and what a way to start with Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Spidey really comes into play, you know? <laughs> yes. I think uh, you've been running house full. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you could say that, but only the only pity over there is the, the sizes of the screens are pretty small. Yes. But uh, much as we would have desired to have it on a big scale, we couldn't because of the space constraint. But nevertheless, we have done pretty well for ourselves. Um, our um, the VIP cinema, which we call it as a gold class, has been a runaway hit. I think people have really received it with great response. Once again, uh, I would say the city of Muscat, please take a bow from from the management of Oman Arab Cinema Company. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you have three cinemas in place there now. Yeah. Uh, I think you've got 172, 176 uh, seats in one. That's right. If you look at the total capacity of the Muscat Grand Mall, it comes to 294 seats. Okay. It's uh, 190, 76 and 24. I think I could be a little wrong with the math yeah. in terms yeah. of one, two numbers here and there. I think 176, 172 right. and 24. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. So, okay, 294 seats, that's not bad. The gold class, uh -huh. what what went uh, into that? I mean, how, how did you come up with that idea? See, it's a very bold move, but at the same time, I think it was a very strategic and a calculated move in that direction. Because what we felt, the city of Muscat definitely needed entertainment of a different variety. Right. If you, do, if you look at uh, the evolution in terms of uh, the, the cinema going habits of the people at large is concerned, from 2000 when we set up the Shati, the, we have created a groundswell, we have created a sort of uh, a tectonic shift one could say in terms of people coming and watching the movies. Now. Over the years, I think people over here are very highly, uh, you know, exposed to a lot of things happening around the world. And then we have been also been getting responses and requests from a lot of people and, and uh, customers saying that, why don't you have a more comforts for people to watch cinema? Then we have mm -hmm. been moving around. We saw the, the gold class similarities appearing in the neighborhood that is in the Dubai, Kuwait and elsewhere and also in the subcontinent. And more so, if you could see the Hollywood or maybe for that matter, even Hong Kong and Singapore and Thailand. The the gold class cinemas have taken big strides. 
so we felt uh, the city of muscat needs it and it is long overdue yes that's that's the background in terms of setting up the gold class cinema so it's with just 24 seats it's absolute luxury by the way i so enjoyed that uh, demo Thank you. that day Thank you very and much. Uh, uh, with 24 seats and uh, sitting in the lap of luxury uh, it would probably a good idea for small parties for corporate events oh yes already we have been inundated with a lot of requests and i think our marketing team is trying to struggle with that uh they are trying to sort of work out an ideal plan in terms of how to sort of do an ideal i would say uh, a mix match in terms of to have regular shows at the same time as private parties yes. because see uh, the the big challenge here is that we cannot afford to have disruption to the regular shows right because if there is a party there is obviously a situation where the public will not be able to watch the movies yeah. but that's the reason we have two other screens over there but uh, well this is the situation i think we will try to overcome it it is like you know it's not going to be anything difficult to deal with it. yes of course yeah. mm-hmm. but then people could always uh, you know base their uh, needs according to what's playing in the theater oh yes yeah. that's right I correct mean, that's correct a lot of good movies coming up <laughs> right we will take a short break but we will definitely be back to tell you more And definitely something more for you to do all you people listening out there you're on 90.4 FM your nation station in our studios Mr. Peesh Chandrashekhar the group general manager of Jawad Sultan group of companies having just introduced uh, three new screens City Cinema at the Muscat Grand Mall congratulations yeah. on that thank you very much it's been a great event a great event i think we i'm still coming to terms with it yeah <laughs> yeah it was a wonderful uh, presentation i should say and uh, definitely Definitely, as you said, created a buzz for uh, all the people out there. That's right. That's right. Very, very correct. Because the buzz was long overdue, as I mentioned earlier. Yes. And uh, people were literally went. Uh, people went to the extent of even asking me that, when are you going to open? They gave me an ultimatum, you know, <laughs> so to say. But then uh, anything which successfully concludes is always a great. Uh, satisfaction despite the fact that whatever pains and agonies that you might have gone through in terms of creating it yes yeah so there's been a lot of uh, thought that have that has gone into this whole idea of uh, placing the cinemas in the muscat grand mall you've taken into consideration the families going out there shopping spending time there and then having entertainment as well yeah that's right yeah. correct yeah it, as i said uh, this is the way the world is moving in fact if you look at uh, the demographics uh, i would say the the patterns or the consumer preferences the stand alone properties are uh, are the thing which are the past in the sense that yeah, one could say so but as far as the moving forward is concerned it is come to stay that people want to watch a cinema in a very large format hypermarket hyper mall i would say where you know you get a complete wholesome entertainment yes. if someone comes in here let's say sometime little before the afternoon he or she the entire family wants to go out at least towards the end of the day when they watch the movie or probably they watch the movie and do the rest right. vice versa right yeah yeah so that's an excellent idea any uh, any thoughts on uh, maybe coming up with a drive in theater Uh, well we are looking at various initiatives but i am not able to say which is the one that we are really going to really zero in on because it's ultimately any initiative which is being taken up uh, locally here which which will have to really cater to the local uh, population and what are the preferences and the tastes of the local population would yes. be because ultimately they are the ones who are driving our business at the moment Absolutely. and then we need to completely satisfy the rules requirements which we are trying to do to our best of our abilities but then initiatives are always there and we are looking at various uh, possibilities as you know this field is also exposed to what we call this is my favorite term which are borrowed it from some of the well known hollywood pro- i mean uh, the the professors from the business school that is a disruptive technology okay the 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 entertainment field used to be having a traditional uh, i would say the spool films as you all know we all grew up with the fact seeing the films which are rolling on a projector yes but uh, the epitaph on the projector is already written uh, I, come 2013 maybe i think we will have to say goodbye to all the projectors the mm-hmm. world over what will happen to those capacities created which is lying in different parts of the world including the companies which make those projectors anybody's guess wow <laughs> so what are we moving into then we have already moved into what we all know as a digital projectors yes. now digital projectors are the in thing as you may be knowing that um, we used to have conventional cameras where you used to take a print and keep it in the archives yes. and whenever we wanted we want to see the pictures but you know after 10 years or so those pictures have a limited validity you know they fade away and so on and so forth come the disruptive technology by a digital camera they moved away and then uh, you you have seen a lot of uh, photographic companies have been folded up because of this particular disruptive technology okay. in that particular space 
So again, in the space in which we are operating, the projector companies which have been making, they have also moved into the different direction. Right. So digital projectors are coming to stay, and uh, we are scre- beaming all of our films on the digital projectors. They come with the latest technology. They have versatility and adaptability. I would say so. You get a laser-like um, perfection on the screen and uh, sound quality, which is really out of the world. Yes. And of course, if it is a 3D movie. I would say that you know it's something to seem to be believed. Okay. Spider-Man is something I would encourage each one of you if you have not seen already to come and watch it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, your marketing team were telling us that day about uh, you know from the um, refreshment side uh-huh. for the gold class. All you right. act- the ushers actually come in with a menu and you can yeah. order yeah. Uh, finger foods and That's right, yeah. beverages. Very true. Very true. Very true. Because we wanted to make it something different uh, for the. for the patrons who are coming over there so that they can order the food there are different types of foods which are available and we have the ushers in to come and then cater their needs and and that's become a big hit in the last few days people just couldn't believe that no that can, <laughs> yeah. they can do that <laughs> yeah. what about 4D uh the 4D technology is basically an extension of i would say the 3D only but only thing is that um when you sit on the chair the chair does all the tricks yes. there is a motion sensor technology which is attached to a chair now the chair moves obviously it's like you know if you go to a closed auditorium and then you watch um, what we call it as a roller coaster ride right. what really happens is you don't go into the roller coaster ride but yes. the chair moves and gives you a feeling that you are going up and yes. down so the eerie feeling and the shouts and the shrieks and all those yes. things keep coming in so roll back to 4D uh, 4D is somewhat very much similar to that particular situation you watch a movie on a 3D and then uh, you put your glasses on and then when you sit on a chair the chair really rocks right. in that sense yeah. the chair moves swivels and so on and so forth obviously giving you a feeling that you are with some of your favorite hollywood star inside the screen yes. so you can imagine what will happen to you yes uh, this is a awesome experience it would be but the only thing is that the 4D um, why it has not uh, taken off or become a very big hit the world over although it has been uh, an hollywood creation is mainly because of the proprietary rights that some of the companies which make 4D okay. technology okay. said because they need to sign up with the hollywood producers right so this is a, a technology which has to be integrated with the films and then it has to be beamed on okay. so once it becomes a big uh, application world over what are we waiting for we will definitely introduce in the city of muscat and i think we can count on uh, oman arab cinema to be the first yeah obviously <laughs> i think we would always want to be the first and we would always want to be in the forefront of trying to innovate as far as quick and as fast as we can we are always alive to the suggestions and uh, we would request each uh, of the audience or our listeners to come and tell us where we can probably improve Absolutely wonderful. So you have several new projects coming up including very Salala and Bareilly. Salala is looking very exciting because the uh, that city needs a cinema very badly and uh, a cinema which is more contemporary, more evolving and uh, more entertaining and uh, continuing our ethos in the city cinema legacy. I'm sure we will be able to provide that to the glorious city of Salala. Wonderful, Mr. Chandu Shekhar. Thank you very much for your time. Wonderful. Thank and you very much for, for having an op- giving me an opportunity. Thanks. And for telling our listeners all about the latest entertainment in town at the Muscat Grand Mall. <laughs> Fantastic. It's always been my pleasure in terms of in you know, a talking live to the uh, listeners and I'm sure it has been a great experience for me. Thank you very much. So, so much. I think everyone will be heading out there, Mr. Chandu Shekhar, Group General Manager, Jawad Sultan Group of Companies. Thank you very much. You're listening to 90.4 FM. This is June with you on the Breakfast Show. Thank you. Very much. This is the Sultanate of Oman.